Welcome to us On The Bank here at Stamford Way Fishery and today we're fishing on Twin Oaks Pool 1 which is behind me just on the left and this is a newly established fishery so what I've brought you here today is is to run through the tactics, baits and methods on approaching a newly stocked venue. Coming to a new venue can be very confusing. Now to run you through approaches is to keep it nice and simple. By this I mean there's four things which you're going to do. First one, plumbing up. Second one is what species you're fishing for. Then this leads on to the third of what bait to bring. Then the last thing is areas to fish in the peg. So what I'm going to do now is jump on my box, run you through all them and let's catch some fish. In fishing, I feel plumbing up correctly is massive. If this is not done correctly, then what you can find is you can miss bites, foul up fish and just give you a general headache. And this is not what you want. So what I'm going to do is run you through our plumb up. But today we've got something different. We've never been to this venue before. I'm on peg three on the Twin Oaks one. Lovely looking peg. Nice island at 14 metres. Uh, I've spoke to the fishery owner and he said there's some deep water in the middle. What I want to do is go out section by section and plumb up and get a feel for how deep the lake is, where the shelves are, where the deepest water is, where it comes up, what, how deep is it tight across, and then this will allow me to pick my methods I'm going to fish, what bait, and start fishing. So what I'm going to do is run you through plumbing up. So what I'm going to do is I've got my rig set up there. It's probably like set two foot deep. Besides a bit of information off the venue owner, so it's two foot in the edge, two foot across, and six foot in the middle. But I want to get my idea in my head right so what I've done is started off it's two foot deep all I'm going to do is slip a 30 gram plummet on and then ship out so first of all I'm going to get to there and just see how deep it is so it's about six inches deeper there where I am so See now I'm looking, I'm just moving it up all the time, there's a shelf starting there. So if I go closer in, say to a top kit, it's six inches shallower, if I put my section on, I'm going to go out of that extra section now and get the idea of the lake. So first of all, go down, see about four inches deeper there, and then go further out. And we're going down to shelf again. So what I'm going to do is come back. Very windy here today. Just pull it down to where I think now. Just flick it out. End of my section. And now I'm going to use, there's like a sign where the entrance of the gate is. That's my marker. So I'm going to line it up with that. Come down. Now, if you see that there, the float is literally level with the water so the top of the pole float is level with the water but i don't want to plumb up like this what i'm looking for is the bottom of the body by this i mean plumbing up to there so i plumb up to there and that'll allow me the tension in the water to hold it tight and know your bait's on the bottom so what i'm going to do is put about two inch on go out to me mark There you go. That's perfect there like that. Everything's tight there. So when I relax my rig, I'll be fishing on the bottom. But what I'm going to do now is just go a little bit further out because I might not be in the deepest water yet. See, there we go. So you get to... Very windy. <laughs> Lower it down there. It's about f six inches deeper. So I know the deepest water is at that joint there, but see if the deepest water carries on for a little bit. So now, the deepest water, 11 metres. So what I'm going to look for now is where the shelf comes up. I've got a separate rig from my cross line. So I'll be able to plumb that up in a minute, but I'm just going to see where that shelf comes up to. So that's 30 metres there. Still there.
See the shelf is still not come up yet. Probably about 14 now. See there's a shelf. So because I've got a short kit and a short four, I've had to add the extra section on to cover the length. But if you was using a long kit and a long four, it'd be 40 meters. But say the shelf's there. Shelf comes up there. So it comes up there. So I've got an idea in my head now. A ship back. I know where the shelf is, where the slope is. So it's a nice gradual slope. Gets to about seven, eight meters. Flattens off on a hard clay bottom. This is because it's a new venue. So there's no silt. You have to worry about that. And then it goes all the way to about 13 meters, 13 a bit meters and comes up. So ideally in my head, if I was to draw a picture now, I'd know exactly where the bottom is. So all I'm gonna do is come back to where I originally planned. That's perfect. So all I do now is just shorten that down. Take the line off there. Now, this is really important to think about your lash limit now. If I was to fish like four inches in this wind, it'd be terrible my presentation would be right. So I'm gonna give myself about 18 inches. Just because of the conditions, but I'm gonna use it in the back shot. But when I go talk to my rigs and when I'm fishing, I'll explain that. Let's put that there. Trap my line up. Don't want to be leaving any line on the banks for these ducks or anything. Wrap around there. So what I'm not gonna do is wrap that back around there, clip it back on me elastic, try and untangle it around me roost. There you go. Now, this rig is literally just on that shelf, that first shelf coming up, which, which I want. I know it's going to be a hard bottom, I know the middle's going to be a hard bottom, but if the new venue you go into has got silt, you want to be trying fishing on the, on the slope. It's much easier to catch than fishing on a flat bottom. So, we've plumbed that one up now, and we're going to plumb up across. One little trick you can do with little venues like this that are nicely cut out, dug perfectly, what you can do is just a little teaser is drop it in front of you, just check the depth and if the depth across will roughly be the same. So what I'm going to do is just ship out to this mark now. There you go, exactly the same. So there you are, I'm in line with, there's like a traffic cone on the end of the road there. So I'm gonna line up with that. Nice and bottom of the body again. Looks perfect that. I know it's windy, but I can still hold the pole. So that's another area to fish. Also, this rig will do down the edge. I'll just check if it's same depth now. And swing it in there. Yeah, so that rig does down the edge as well. So there you are, I've got two rigs now that can cover a lot of the area of the lake. Just keeping it nice and simple. Now that we've plumbed up, I'm just gonna show you the rigs I've set up for today. For that short six meter line just up the shelf, I've gone for a 10 hollow in a short kit. Be nice and soft. I spoke to the owner and he said the fish are between 10 ounces and up to four or five pounds. So nice fishing, newly stocked fish. So I'm gonna match this to the elastic. Just a 10 holler. And I've got 070 main line. And I've got a bulk of number three back shot. This is just so I can lower it in the water, keep everything tight and it's not gonna get bounced around in the wind because it is really windy today. Because it's really windy, I've got a four by 16 cart pellet. Sorry, a four by 16 F1 pellet. This is so it sits straight to the bottom, I'm not going to get wafted around in the wind. And then I've got a strong bulk of eight number eights 
inch apart down to a hook length which is a pre-tied cut down four inch SFL 16 and 011 so we're on a nice 16 hook to be fishing baits such as expanders two maggots maybe a bit of corn so I don't need to go any lighter I don't need to go any heavy that's just a nicely balanced hook now for a cross I've just got a nine holler just because it's a bit further and you're shipping back so what you want to do you don't want to bounce them bounce them out you just want to come back and nice and smooth net the fish same again 017 just got a 4x14 this time because it's about two and a half foot strong bulk number nines on this one then i've got a three inch sfl 011 it's just three inch because i've been in a bit shallow water and i can get my bait fishing quicker across so they're the rigs now you're going to run you through the bait now we're going to talk through the bait i've chose to bring today now with this being a new, a new fishery and the fish probably have been fed on pellets this would be a main choice of my bait i'm going to fish what i've done is i've soaked some four mils down and some micro pellets so these are going to be my two feed pellets that i'm looking to fish say in the shallow water across i'm going to look to fish micro pellets but if i'm getting funny liners miss bites and I can swap the feeding soak four mils to get the fish down on the bottom and feeding correctly. On the short line I'm going to start off feeding micros but I think if there's a lot of fish feeding I'm going to have to start throwing some four mils in to pin them fish to the bottom, make some noise, you're drawing fish in all the time but they're a nice heavy bait to pin them fish to the bottom and pick them off. I've also brought some maggots for the hook and some corn for a slightly bigger bonus fish you feel like there's a carp in your peg or a bigger F1 and I've also brought some pro expanders in four and six mil and just an old batch of Finn, Andy Finley expanders in there little golden ones so just try them on the hook they'll be my main hook bait I reckon but I've got other hook baits to try and I've also brought some super crushed ground bait now this just crush down expanded pellets so this is what the fish have been used to eating they've been feeding like when they're younger and now they're in the lakes and they're getting fed on pellets this can be brilliant beauty about this ground bit is i can feed it loose i can feed it in a tight ball to get it to the bottom i can wet it up to draw a fish in gives me another option to try and catch some fish the beauty of it if i feed some ground bait you can put double maggot on the up put a piece of corn put a pellet and put anything on, I can add some micros in, it just gives me an all round versatility of my bait. So that's my bait, and let's get fishing. Now I'm going to start fishing, so what I'm going to do is pop an expander on. It's the 4mm Pro expander, no need to pump him. Now, the method of this fishing, I'm going to talk you through these pots got all different sizes, I've got small, medium, I've got a large and the difference between these large and mediums is I've got, I've cut the blue bit off the top now this just allows the bait to release a lot quicker and it's a different amount of feed what I mean by this is, say if there's a hundred pellets in that one because I've cut the top off, there may only be 70 in that one and this allows you to know how much you're feeding, regular feeding and the amount of bait you're feeding. So first of all, I'm going to start off with just a small pot. What I'm going to do is just simply place it on the end there, slide it on, keep it about just under an inch away from your end of your pole. You've got your expander on there and all I'm going to do is just fill my micros up to the top give it a little squeeze now I may have to change the way I'm feeding but I'm just going to go in to start with what we're going to do is in line with that mark keep it nice and steady let the holes on the bottom of the pot release the bait now it releases the bait now just lift your rig up lower your bait down now you're fishing straight away Slow the back shot so it creates an L in the water. So your rig's sitting nice. 
it's all tight it's not moving through your peg like this it's just sitting all nice and tight and you got to wait for a bite then beauty when you come to new venues it's pretty exciting you don't know what you're going to hook how are you going to be catching them do you need to feed more do you feed less do you, if this might not be the right line to start on you might have to fish across all day you might have to fish down the edge it's just trying to find out work out which is best on the day You just want to keep that back shot to the left out the wind so it holds your rig like an L. So you float here and your line's straight and then your back shot's holding it so it doesn't move, it doesn't go through with the wind. Just keeps everything nice and simple. Because you've got big positive droppers, say number eight, you're going to see them sharp dinks on the float. Like that one. Miss that one, just lay it back in. Hold it there. When you're on your mark, you know, if rig's settled up, just lower it down. Drop your back shot into the water. Keep everything nice and tight. Just wait for that sharp, positive dink and then just give it a little lift. That's what you're looking for. Also, you can just give it a lift and drop. Try and draw a fish in. Try and pull that. There you go. So, try and get my roller. First fish of the session. Got the left one. So this is the type of fish we're looking for. Little F ones. Nice little F ones to knock him. Take the hook out. So it's a nice little start. Call it F one. Now I'm just going to start the same again, just a pro expander on the hook. All I'm going to do this time is, because it's a little bit windy now, and I feel that the micros might have drifted in the toe. So all I'm going to do is give the micros a nice hard squeeze. So just create a little ball, just plop them in there. They, now these, these won't go to the bottom in the ball, but they'll go about three quarters of the way down and break up onto the bottom. So you still get a bit of attraction into the peg. So what you want to do, don't want to be bouncing the pole. Don't want to be, you don't want to be feeding your bait there. You want to feed your bait, literally, inch on the water, lower it in, sneak your bait in. Your bait's gone in now, now lift your rig out. Make sure it's down that slope, remember, because we're fishing on a slope here. It's down that slope. Hold it tight so your rig catches up, pulls into the shelf, and then now you're fishing straight away. Now, the wind's going this way, but the toe's coming this way. It must be bouncing off the bottom there. So what I have to do is I'm going to hold my back shot to the right so my rig doesn't move in the toe. So it keeps it nice over the top of my bait. So when the fish come in, it's a nice positive bite. You're not going to foul up any, like letting your rig drift through or miss bites. Just sit there, wait for that sharp ding. Beauty of pellets is you can feed them and they're an instant bait. You don't need to prime them. Say if you're fishing maggots, maggot short, you need to feed it for an hour, two hours, even longer sometimes. But with pellets, you can literally feed your bait, drop your rig in, and catch one straight away if there's one feeding in your peg. Be 
So just give it a lift and drop. And there's one. See that ten hollow? It's not too soft and it's not too strong. It's nice. Another F1. Now that's hooked in the top bit perfectly. It just shows everything you've done is nice and correct. Just pop him back. Now, as I've talked about in past videos, it's just like a mini process. So you're just going to do this again until the fish tell you to change, either miss bites, that means to feed. You're either in a ball or feed some four mils and if you're not getting bites then you'll have to feed some micro pellets loose. Tap them in just to get them back there but we'll go again. Just slip a four mil on again. Beauty of these pro expanders, you don't need to pump them, they just all sink. Now I'm going to try that ball of micros again but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop in two or three hard four mil pellets that I've soaked up because I have a feeling the way to catch them later on I'll be throwing four mils in and be able to catch them a lot quicker and build your weight up so same again get to the end of your pole try not to get blown around the wind it's an absolute nightmare today dunk it there so all your bait falls out nice Lift your rig out so it comes out. Hold your pole there. Lower it in. is just to be nice and patient there's a little indication then you are fishing for a lot of fish but the key is just to be nice and smooth don't be rushing around if you feed your bait wrong you can cause the fish to come off the bottom miss bites give you problems and then effectively slow you down just add a little line and then There you are, nice positive bite. Oh, feels a bigger fish this actually. Ten dollars coming out nice. Don't know what this is. Nice fish this is. Hopefully it's one of the commons or mirrors. Is it in here? There we are. Look at that little fish. This is what I was talking about before, these are the little fish you can slip a piece of corn on. Now if you're fishing in matches these would be your bonus fish you'd like. Get the hook out. Nice little pound and a half mirror. Now if you're in matches this would be your bread and butter or your F1s but your little bonus fish them, them carp, they're real weight builders. You see it takes about two or three F1s for the size of that fish so when you fish it, when there's one in your peg, trying to bit change bait like a piece of corn can be deadly. Now, let's hit the pellet on again. Some micros in the bottom there. they are just going to feed a ball of micros and then going to feed some pellets again. Just because I feel that's going to be the way to catch them later on. Had a great start. That's how pellet, instant pellets can be. I've had three fish straight away. Lower your pot down. Try and hold it still in the wind. Make sure you feed your bait right. And you fed your bait there. Let your bait, fed your bait, now you're fishing now. Nice and positive.
weird today. The wind's like sort of off me back, but it across me. So one minute you need to hold your back shot, one minute you don't. Very strange. Little indication then. Oh, just a bite there. Let me expand it. So this is normally the case. It's probably like four or five feeds up now. And we're gonna we've missed a bite, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go out. I'm just gonna change my pot quickly. So a little one with a hole in the top. I'm just gonna feed ten four mil pellets. All I'm trying to do with this is trying to pin them on the bottom. So you flip your rig out. There. Tap ten in. Try and tap them about ten inches off the water. Hold your rig up. Lower it down. Now ideally this should send them fish straight to the bottom. Not give you daft bites and liners, just straight down, give you a nice positive bite. Don't write them micros off. Again, we might have to feed again in. There you go. See, that was a much quicker bite that was, just sending them fish to the bottom. All I'm going to do is chuck 10 over, just to get ready for the next fish. Feels like a little left one. Oh, nearly did me then. Like you say that, oh, 11, nicely balanced. That's 16 up. And there's nice fish, nice F1s. Hooked in the top lip. So I'm just going to put him back. See that process again. Slip me pellet on. Now that feeding four mils is working a lot better. I'll feed ten again. Get up to me mark. Very windy today. Get to me mark, just hold me pole to so clamp it in to make sure my bait goes in that area. Now I'm going to lift my rig out. It's important to get that pole in the correct position. Just stops your foul looking fish, missing bites. Like I said before, giving you an absolute nightmare. A little indication then on the way down. Now with these four mils, you won't get as many indications as micros, but you'll look more fish. This is just down to depth, so when we fish across, we'll be looking to fish micros. It's a lot shallower, it's two, two and a half foot. You can feed your bait, you'll get a lot quicker bites because you're further away from yourself. But with a short line, you're looking deeper water, so you can hold more fish in that water. And you can draw fish down to it. Them fish won't be willing to feed on the bottom in four and a half foot, Mr. Bite then. They'll be wanting to come off the bottom. As they naturally do. Two bites then. So I'll have a few bites now. I'll miss one more bite and I'll uh, reset my rig and feed some bait with my loose feed. Just spread them out. What you can find with these new fish, they can be absolutely ravenous. So they can give you liners, miss bites. you just got to settle them down. Get them feeding nice and steady. Not too much. That one's had me pellet. I'll just throw some bait there. So, that one's nicked me pellet. So I'm going to slip another one on. Probably me striking a bit too hard. And all I'm going to do is fill up my pot and just start again. And a few liners indications then. Just me being a bit slow, so what I'll do. Get the bait in there. Get the rig out can in this wind. Hold it tight, clamp it down. Hold it tight, hold it tight, hold it tight. There you go. Now it may look horrendous conditions, but four by sixteen is just sitting there nice and perfect. It's not getting drifted around with that back shot it's just sat there nice. I can see all the indications on my float. I can read my float.
Seems to be a lot of fish coming in the peg now. What I might find is, I might have to come close to myself, so I might have to take a section off. If the fish keep coming off the bottom, there's a lot of fish coming in, just come close to yourself or try down the edge. There you are. There's one. So I'm going to feed 10 pellets, like that. Try and send them down to the bottom for next chuck. But like I was saying, if there's a lot of fish coming in a peg there at 6 metres, I'll have to come close to myself. Another F1 peas in a pod. Lovely fish. And the soft pellet again. So slip the expander on. Fair dudes though, he's got a nice, lovely setup here today. First time I've ever seen the venue. Lovely setup, every peg nice and clean. Stephen brought us a nice butty from the cafe. We had a coffee. Nice and easy, I haven't left my peg. Lovely little setup. So, and the fishing is pretty good to be honest. F1s and carp. So, flick that back out again. Hold that there. Lower that down. Like I was saying before, if you're getting a lot of missed bites and foul lookers, just plumb up again and start again the section shorter. Because in theory it is a fish race, they are feeding ravenous, but you want to be nice and sensible with your feed. But if there's a lot of fish coming in your peg and you can catch them closer, it's easy to catch a bigger weight. Like I said before, it is, a, it is deeper there than the cross and it can get a lot more fish shorter. So you can give your liners, you say you've got a fish at like a foot deep, you can have one at three foot deep. Give you all sorts of problems so just think about your fishing what you're feeding if i was to tap micros in there it'd be all over the place it's a good little starting method don't get me wrong if i was to tap micros in it'd be all over the shop oh it's the bite there be all over the shop be missing bites like that and all i want to do is keep it nice and simple Keep catching fish. This wind is an absolute nightmare. Hopefully it dies down and we can be able to fish across to the island later on just to demonstrate that or down the edge. I think we should be alright. I'm going to have a few indications there but not a bite. So what I'm going to do. Fill 10 pellets back up. Flip my rig out. Let's just start again. Get some bait down to the bottom. Hold it there like that. Let it come in. Try and catch one more on this and then we'll have a go fishing across. It's slightly different. It'll be fading micros a bit more. Changing the cab pots and stuff like that. So it's a different way of fishing. But we've had a good start on this little line here. Nice way of fishing. So what we're going to do is keep nice and tight. Like I said, the wind is an absolute pain today. Fishing's alright though, so it's not too bad. Do just catch one more and then we'll demonstrate fishing across. Because we're fishing long pole up to the island catching on soft pellets i'm not going to forget about this line we're going to feed regular throwing some bait in keep them fish interested
So what I'm going to do again is just sit back, take that pot off, put my micros pot back on and just feed a nugget of micros again. Try and feed, get the fish back in the peg. We tried to catch them on the bottom, we had a few daft bites, but now we're just going to feed some micros again. Drop the rig in. Try and draw some fish in a different bait. Should get an instant reaction from this. Any fish in the area. There you go. So, we'll call this the last fish in this line. A bit bigger F1. And I'm going to go across now, but it's a nice way to finish on that line. We'll come back later, we'll start throwing four mils and we'll try and catch them some more. Up the top lick, so. Lovely little fish. Popping back, let's get on the long pole. So, we're coming onto the long pole now. We've been fishing on a short pole, we've caught six or seven on a short pole but now we're going to move over to the island where it's a lot shallower we're just going to fish a bit different we're going to feed micros for a small part with just the expander on because we're fishing further away from ourselves we're going to get a lot more bites to put fishing in it regular so we're going to give it a go now and put the expander on put four mil pro expander on again just fill it up with micros got a small pot on for the minute with not chopped down, so. Now we're gonna pick a mark. Just take your time with the wind, it's really hard to hold the pole at the minute, so. Take your time. Try not to bounce your bait out. And when you come to the end of your pole, I'm in line with that car on the far bank. Hold your pot in the water, don't tap it out. Release it, lift it up. Now you're fishing straight away then. So just drop your back shot so the rig doesn't move. So what you're looking for now is any sharp dinks, slight indications of a bite. Just give it a lift. Miss that one. We got lucky now, it's been windy all day and then we've just gone across now and it's slowly died off. So that was a bite or a reed. So the wind's died down now, we'll be able to ship across to the island, which is... There you go, there's one. Ooh. See that nine all are working nice. Give it one strip to get the fish up. Trying to do me around my keep net. So nice F1 across. Hook in the top lip. Pop in my net. And pop an expander on. This time it's going to feed half micros and half ground bait just to try and draw one in. What I'm going to do is push it in my pot like that. Slightly on the wet side so it'll just fall straight to the bottom in two and a half foot of water. Hopefully this wind dies down so we can get fishing tight across. Otherwise we're going to have to drop on that short line. Get gusty now. Plop that out, rig in position, align it straight away then. Trying to hold it as tight as I can, I have to come short in a minute I think. It's too much across there.
There you go. Put this fish in and have to come short. The wind's getting a bit too up now. One strip. Blown about in this gale. Just a little mirror, a little common. Lovely fish. Just shows a fish on the island, a bit bigger than where you can hold it, but because it's got so windy now, I'll just drop short for a few fish in and we'll call it a day. Let's get this one in the net. Get on the short line. So we've had a brilliant session here today at Stamford Way. We've been catching across to the island on the long pole. We've been catching on the short pole. We've had loads of fish, F1s, lovely looking carp. And what I'm going to do is run you through I've been catching these fish. So, last two fish. Just found the best hook bait was double maggot. Seemed to less miss bites than on a pellet. And just simply squeezing a hard ball of micras. Get into your mark now. Pop your ball in. Flip your rig out. Lower it down. To there. As I was saying, expand the pellet was good early on, but we found as the session's gone on, double maggot, single maggot's been the ideal hook bait. We seem to let, miss less bites on it, hook more fish, and that's what it's all about. There you go, there's another one. Had some lovely fish up to two pounds. The real scrappers for the size. Ten dollars working lovely in a short kit. Feels like a car. Probably going to be an F1 now. But, so yeah, just pick. Just the hook bait picking out. We tried corn. It was no quicker or slower. But it wasn't as good as maggot. So yeah, I love a little common. Lovely little common, looks brand new. Double maggot hanging out of his mouth. Pop him in the net. So we just catch one more. We just pop two maggots on now. Slide them on. Squeeze a little ball of ground right there. What I'm going to do is pop me bait in. Shut me rig straight over the top. There you go. Hold it tight. Been really good today. This short line's been really the main area we've caught, but I think that's due to the wind. When we were fishing across, we could catch a lot better stamp of fish than the short pole. But we have had a lot more bites. There's one. They don't have to go in this pool though for the size they are. But we've had a load of bites short, great days fishing. End on this F1 now. So what a lovely fish to end on, pristine F1. We'll have a little catch shot, see what we've caught. Then we'll get off home, shall we? So there you go. Just a few fish from today's session, as you can see. Peas in the pods, commons, mirrors, F1s. What a fantastic day we've had at this fishery today. Stanford Way Fishery, new venue. Hope you enjoyed the way I've approached it and it reduces the confusion and when you go into new venues. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and if you haven't subscribed, and I'll see you on the bank soon.